Can Georgia Southern win with defense? It's locked on Sunbelt. You are locked on Sunbelt, your daily podcast on the Sunbelt Conference, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. All right, Dave Schultz, Locked On Sunbelt, your team every day. Today's episode uh, brought to you by uh, Game Time. Don't download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code Locked On College for twenty dollars off your first purchase. Terms apply. Apologize for the tardiness uh, and the uh, casualness. Uh, we are out on uh, Mama Schultz's deck in Central New York, humidity free. Although uh, we've had now two passing showers, and hopefully one won't happen while I'm uh, enjoying. Uh, the outdoors. Uh, let's talk a little Georgia Southern as we continue our preview of previews. Uh, if you will, we'll get to, can they win uh, with defense here? Um, I just thought that was a better intro because for the first time since Clay Helton has been there, there is a quarterback battle and please Georgia Southern fans, let me know who's winning the battle. Cause when I had spoken with Clay Helton, he had hopped on the show, you know, I think after spring ball, uh, he said it's wide open, right? And so on, I'm going to go on our lads, for lack of a better place, we have Dexter Williams, redshirt senior transfer. He's number one, JC French, number two, David Dallas, number three, Tyler Budge, number four, Colton Fitzgerald, uh, number five. Okay. Um, We don't know. I don't know who is in the lead um, and what the case may be Uh, at this time for the past two seasons, uh, Clay Helton had his guy, especially heading into, I think coming out of spring, maybe even heading into spring, right? There was Kyle Van Trees and Davis Brin. And those were the guys. And Kyle Van Trees set all kinds of Georgia Southern records. Davis Brin may have set some more, uh, but they were prolific passers. And offensively, they uh, were really good. They did not have an issue offensively. Uh, In 2022, Georgia Southern, um, more than 32 points a game offensively, right? And Kyle Van Trees will go down in Georgia Southern history, going into Lincoln, you have a QB draw that, again, we all saw coming because somebody went in motion and the, you know, Red Seas parted, literally and figuratively, uh, in Lincoln. And he scampers in for a a game-winning score and a huge upset over uh, Nebraska. Um, And then the following season, um, last year, see how quickly the – oh, that goes quickly. uh, Davis Brin, a little bit less at 30 uh, points, uh, 30 points a game. So a little bit less. The problem with both of them – was the interceptions just way too many interceptions right last year davis brin you know 30 3700 yards almost 3800 yards that is a ton in 13 ball games 24 touchdowns is pretty good the 19 interceptions is not and the wisconsin game was obviously a good uh <laughs> amount of those uh, in 22, uh, also Kyle Van Trees threw too many interceptions. He had 27 touchdowns and threw 16 interceptions. He threw for over 4,200 yards, 4,253. Uh, so somewhere along the way, you know, they have to protect the ball. And what we hear, you know, from the coaches, it's not um, – necessarily making the right read, which obviously will go into the next thing, but you got to make the right decision. And when you're throwing some balls in some tight windows, they have to be to the right side. It's not necessarily you want to hit the, you know, crossing pattern in stride. So instead of a six yard gain where he's got a, well, here comes the rain. If I have to go inside quickly, (laughs) um, uh, whereas, you know, do they have to dive? Do they have to, you know, reach back, you know, and instead of, you know, you know, they catch it at, at four yards and maybe getting, you know, two or three more, you know, can they go for 15 yards and, you know, you make one guy miss on a crossing pattern, 
and two guys miss. Now you're going for 70 yards, right? That's really what it is. Right? The defensive back falls down, and then you make a move on the safety, and you get a block, and boom, you're gone, all right, um, if the ball is thrown where it's supposed to be thrown. But also, you know, on a little out pattern where you throw it to the inside, it's going to get knocked down or picked off, whereas if you throw it properly, you know, it could be a six-yard gain or even a 15-yard gain, whatever the case may be. Has anybody ever done, has even Drake Toll done a locked on in the rain? This gets any, well, the computer's now getting wet, so I'm going to have to move inside. It wasn't supposed to rain today. I don't know what's going on. Uh, we'll see how much longer uh, we're out here. It was a passing shot. Now the computer's getting wet. All right, so we'll pause this, move inside. And we're back. I don't think I've ever used pause before, so we're using some new things. And now I'm going to be able to see if this microphone makes any difference. I don't think that it does. Uh, all right. Anyways, we wisely moved inside. And I'm kidding you. As soon as I picked up my computer to move inside, the rain actually stopped. Nonetheless, uh, let's continue. So it's obviously important for the quarterback to be rather accurate to make those throws. Uh, and some of it is the uh, decision making. Now you always have, you know, a ball gets tipped at the line. Uh, you know, the other team's trying to, but obviously, you know, you have to cut back on those interceptions. Let's just take a quick look, see at the, uh, you know, the, the passing statistics in, you know, the Sun Belt, because that's just too much, man. That's just, that's just a ton. Like passing. Uh, offense, Georgia Southern led it with 302 yards a game, but they also threw 20 interceptions. All right. Um, Marshall at 18, ULM had 13. Uh, James Madison, South Alabama, ODU all had 11. Now, South Alabama and ODU didn't do very well. Uh, James Madison was okay. App State with 10. And then Texas State Coastal, the Cajuns had nine. And that's, you know, getting one less per game, right? Arkansas State with eight, Southern Miss with eight, Georgia State with seven. And when you know it, the team that is your two-time defending Sun Belt champion, Troy with six. Now that was, and admittedly, Gunnar Watson improved exponentially uh, last season. Uh, but that, again, a team that kind of relies on passing, but Gunnar Watson, when he had to make the plays, did. So who ends up being, the point is, Whoever that quarterback is, and if the Georgia Southern fans want to let me know, is it uh, Dexter Williams um, from Indiana, redshirt senior uh, transfer, if he's going to be uh, the guy uh, to come over? Let's see here. Um, did not see any action last year for Indiana. He was in the transfer portal in November. Um, and again, in previous years, Clay Helton had mentioned – you know, our guy, Kyle Antrese, is going to be, right, he came in for Buffalo and Davis Brin from Tulsa, and those guys were it. Um, you know, they said, and, uh, Charles Huff the same way with Marshall. We have our starting quarterback, but they got to earn it, right? That You know, this is the guy as of right now. If we play the game today, this is who we're going with. You don't get that a lot, right? Like, at some Bell Media Days, it'll be interesting to see if Mike Desimo says, uh, you know, if Mike Desimo says, here's our starting quarterback, I'm going to doubt it, but we'll see. Uh, so we'll see who it is for Georgia Southern. But the key, whomever it is, has to cut down on the uh, interceptions. All right. Now let's get to the tease when we come back. Can Georgia Southern win with defense? We will do that after I tell you about game time. Game time is an authorized ticket marketplace of Major League Baseball, which makes getting tickets faster and easier. Prices on the Game Time app actually go down the closer it gets to the first pitch. With killer last minute deals, all in prices and views from your seat, and their lowest price guarantee, Game Time takes the guesswork out of buying Major League Baseball tickets. You get those last minute deals on anything. You can save up to 60% off buying last minute for sports, concerts, comedy, theater, etc. You get save even more when you do the zone deals. You choose the section and let game time choose the seats. You get to see those seats. You get a panoramic view from your seat in the app. 
before you buy. And Game Time has the lowest price guarantee, or Game Time will credit you 110% of the difference. Take the guesswork out of buying MLB tickets with Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code Locked On College for twenty dollars off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account and redeem code L O C K E D O N C O L L E G E. Locked On College for twenty dollars off. Download Game Time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. I don't mind telling you, I'm impressed. Even looking at the word, I spell that right almost every single time. Dave Schultz, Locked On Sunbelt, your team every day. All right, so this may be a switch. So one of the issues with Georgia Southern is not only the interceptions, which probably leads to the next issue, uh, but uh, can they win with defense? And obviously when you're turning it over, you're giving extra possessions to the other team's offense, and that has been an issue since uh, Clay Helton has arrived on campus. So you go to the team, Points per game in 2022, uh, they scored. Georgia Southern scored 32. Um, the opponent scored 31. And almost exactly the same. 32.69 offensively, 31.62 defensively. We go to 2023. And scoring per game, 30.15. Giving up, 30.46. All right, that's got to change. You go back a couple of seasons before uh, Clay got there. And I noticed it's like in the COVID year, 2020, they scored 27 points a game, but they only gave up 20 points a game. Now, there's a reason for that. All right. I, I forget about the turnovers. Uh, Clay Helton does a pro passing game, and Georgia Southern used to run the option. So they take a lot of time off the clock. And the other team has to be really efficient to take advantage of the fewer possessions they're going to get. So that's an issue. Let's see what happened in 2001. All right. Um, taking a second to change. Flip over. And remember, Clay Helton got this job. He was let go from USC and got this job while the season was still going on. All right, so then they struggled in a big way, uh, only scoring 20 points a game, but giving up 31 points a game. So because the offense wasn't very good, the defense struggled. Uh, and I bring this up because Georgia Southern in Athlon's preseason all Sun Belt, you have only one first team offensively, Jalen White, the running back, but you have first team Defense, three guys. Isaac Walker on the defensive line, Justin Rhodes on the defensive line, and Marquise Watt Trentson. We'll try the, uh, that away. <laughs> Marquise Watson Trent. <laughs> Take two. Uh, so you have two guys up front and a linebacker. That means Georgia Southern can... front seven is going to be very tough, right? They're going to be able to get after the quarterback and um, maybe stop that run. That would be uh, what we're looking at for Georgia Southern. And if they can do that, it takes a huge pressure, huge pressure off of the offense where you're overcoming those turnovers. You have to be super efficient on offense. You know, if you have a thing – just a little bit, right? If you score a few more points, even if you score for a few less points, but you cut that, you know, 30 at 30 point average down to 27. If you if you average 32 and you're giving up 27, uh, and that's not that's a huge difference compared to the last couple of years where you basically have given up the same, even not, even if not a little bit more. And so you get that defense going. And coming after the quarterback, right? A lot of times when the best players are in the secondary, they need help up front. And so, and sometimes this is what happens. Those guys have a good year. But the reason they had a good year is them. But the guys up front allowed the guys in the back 
to have these fantastic years. And sometimes the guys up front didn't quite get as much credit as the guys in the back, and those guys up front leave, and they don't get as much pressure on the quarterback the next year. But when you have the guys up front, when you got when you have the guys up front to provide that pressure, and you know the defensive line is the strength of that team, uh, that makes it a lot easier for Clay Helton. And as much as I am a, um, as much as I am a uh, always go for it offensive guy, and you know you you play to win the game, not keep it close, Chet, where you're kicking field goals just to keep it close and not get blown out. Sometimes you're going to make a decision to where, let's see if they can go the length of the field. We're up by four. All right. I don't have to go for it on fourth and four at my, or even at their 45, right? I'll, I'll take the chance that even if they start on the 20, let's see if they can go the length of the field instead of half of the length of the field if I don't get this, right? Whereas, boy, if I don't make this, um, all right, the other way. I have to make this because I have to score because I know my defense is not going to hold them. I would presume that's the way that Clay Helton has coached the last couple of years. I need to outscore the other opponent, the, uh, the opponent. And I know that's the key to the game. Thank you, Captain Obvious. But you guys know what I'm saying, right? If I can stop them from scoring, all the pressure is not on my offense. And maybe in turn, some of those interceptions are cut down because I'm sure some of those interceptions are trying to make a play in a close game. Whereas maybe we can eat up some of the clock. We don't have to throw it as much. Like wasn't it Vince Lombardi who said, you know, I think it was Vince Lombardi, you know, three things can happen when you pass it and two of them are bad. And you could have the fourth one would be a sack, right? You can have a completion, incompletion, or an interception. So um, that's where if this defense can improve, even just marginally, right? No one's thinking that he, you know, they're going to go from 30 to 20, and God forbid if they did, they're going to contend in the East. They will contend in the East if they drop it that much. But, boy, if you just cut it on 10%, go from 30 to 27, that's a huge difference. Huge difference. All right, let's take a timeout. Um, again, Georgia Southern, another one of those teams that always has high expectations. We'll talk about that after I thank you. All right, we are up to 1,284 subscribers. We have really uh, 27, 28, 29, 30. So today counts as one. Uh, we need four subscribers a day to get to 1,300. Pass it along. We're trying to get to 1,300 through June, and we're almost there. 1,284 uh, had a, have hanging a really good June, almost 50 subscribers this month. Uh, hopefully we can get, get 100 in July and August um, as football ramps up. Really appreciate it. The, the channel continues to grow. We'll continue to do these previews. We'll get um, you know the beat writers on uh, closer to the media days, and we can go from there. Uh, we do have a quick shout out, Josh Boutwell, who covers Troy. Um, he publicly acknowledged this, so we'll give him a shout out, uh, having surgery to remove what cancer is left. So we are wishing him all the best. And we look forward to having you on Locked on Sunbelt. Uh, and really appreciate all those, all those support. Um, I know the other Sunbelt, um, you know, podcast uh, went by the wayside. I think those guys did a fantastic job, but for the, uh, certainly for the time being, we will continue Locked on Sunbelt. And we do appreciate um, all of your support. All right, Dave Schultz, Locked On Sun, about your team every day. Uh, and Georgia Southern is another one of those teams. Um, I probably have said this before, but just to let people know. So I haven't just started following Georgia Southern um, this year. A friend of mine back in the day uh, when I worked for the Jacksonville Suns uh, went to Georgia Southern. So I remember this. So this was the late 90s. I remember the original Adrian Peterson, right? Before the Oklahoma Adrian Peterson came into play. The original Adrian Peterson in that triple option set was running all over everybody, setting NCAA records and played for the Bears for a bit, right? Little guy, just a little dude. Uh, and so my um, my knowledge goes, I wouldn't say my knowledge. Um, 
but I certainly go back and have known Georgia Southern, you know, to be a power at that, you know, what is now the FCS level, but it was Division One Double A. And so now, because you know they've moved up to the Sun Belt, the expectations haven't changed. They still expect to win, just like JMU expects to win, just like Marshall expects to win, just like App State expects to win. Uh, and uh, it is difficult uh, when everybody expects that and everybody can't win. Um, so it is hard. Having said that, no, they're looking for more than what Clay Helton has done um, the last a uh, couple of years. All right. Um, you know, that's for sure. He went, uh, did they go six and seven both years? Six and seven in his first year, although they did get that big win over uh, App at the end, 51-48, the unadulterated joy. Um, huge win there. And they also went six and seven. They did lose to um, App State at the end. In fact, they, yeesh, they're coming in on a five-game losing streak. So they actually had, they had that big win against uh, Georgia State. They had a big win. They did lose to James Madison, but they had a big win over um, Coastal. I mean, they were two and one, four and one, five and two, six and two. I could have just done that the other way, uh, but they've lost five straight. They got blown out by Texas State, uh, lost against Marshall, Old Dominion beat them. They got hammered by App State, and uh, they lost to Ohio. Kind of lost their way. Um, and so, obviously, the expectations are more than those results so far. There are different six and sevens um, than what? Georgia Southern had, and you start out six and two and finish up six and seven. Obviously, that is disappointing. Okay. Um, they're starting off with Boise State, ESPNU at home, Saturday afternoon, 4 p.m. kickoff. You have a chance to set the tone for the season against a lot of people who are picking Boise State to get into the college football playoff. Like they are considered one of the top teams in group of five. I don't think. Georgia Southern is at that level. I'll rephrase that. I don't think other people think that Georgia Southern is at that level. I probably don't either. I, I still think that App is probably um, a little higher. We'll see what JMU has. I'm a big Bob Chesney fan. But, boy, if you take down Boise State, you're going to be in good shape. You start off well. But then you got to go all the way to Nevada. And what were they last year? Again, Uh, sometimes they're good. I know the Cajuns beat them in the New Orleans Bowl. And it's, you know, we always call them Nevada. And I think the running back came back. It's Nevada. And I opened my mouth, probably could have got, you know. <laughs> I said, score a touchdown. I don't think you heard me. I said, score a touchdown. And then you can tell me, you know, what this, what the, how, how to pronounce it. Um. Let's see what Nevada was last year. And, of course, these are all so much year to year. Um, but I don't have – I have a feeling Nevada wasn't very good for the most part. I mean, they were 2-10. I presume they'll be better this year. But I, you know. And they were 2-10 and 10 in 22. So they won a total of four games in the last two seasons. So you actually have a shot at – you know, starting out 2-0, winning on the road is tough. You get South Carolina State, that should be a win. You should start out 3-0. Then you're going to Ole Miss, and, okay, maybe Ole Miss is overlooking Georgia Southern, although I would presume if they've beaten Boise State and they're 3-0, you know, Lane Kiffin's going to be like, don't don't, over, don't overlook uh, Ole Miss, although that's a nice ball game. You have, did Clay Helton replace Lane Kiffin? Was that it? At USC, right? Was that that whole deal? So that's a nice storyline with that. So we'll say four and one at Georgia State. Georgia State is kind of the wild card in the East. We don't have any idea what they're um, what they're going to get, what they're going to be. Um, so that's impossible to predict. You get Marshall and James Madison at home. Those should be wins, right? If you're going to be the team that everybody thinks you are, you got to beat Marshall and then James Madison at home. ODU is tough because that's on the road. You're at South Alabama. I don't really know what South Alabama is going to be this year at all. 
Uh, you get Troy at home, you're at Coastal, and then you get App State at home. There is not a lot of, uh, they don't have a lot of long road trips and a lot of long homestands. Like they don't play more than two games a row on the road, and they don't play more than uh, two games a row on the road. They do play three or four on the road at ODU, at South Alabama home versus Troy and then at Coastal. So that's a little bit of a tough stretch. But, you know, on the back end of that, you could say you get Troy at home, you're at Coastal, and then you get App State at home. So I guess you'd say it's an even schedule. Let me see what the over-under is for Georgia Southern. Did I, did I see like six and a half? Let's see here. Um, fan duel. Let's see. Over-under. Because... I mean, they got some wins there that they, I mean, they should start out three and oh to be, or no, I'll rephrase that. They could start out the season uh, three and oh. oh. You do have to sign in. Let me see if I can get it on the app quickly. The reason I don't, you know, I don't know if it's got my password. I'll already have a FanDuel account. Let's see. Oh, maybe it does. I doubt it. No, it's not. Uh, mm -hmm. I probably changed the password. Yeah, we don't have that combination. Um, search uh, Sunbelt. Let's see here. Uh, Georgia Southern is plus 2,200. That's towards the bottom of winning the Sunbelt Championship. Uh, let's see. Let's see if we got win totals. Georgia Southern. <laughs> we do not have Georgia Southern is a ten and a half point underdog against Boise State at home. I don't like that. <laughs> I, I, that's not a bad bet. All right. Let's see if we got win totals here. Win totals. Uh, college football. I just want to see what they are. Um, win totals. Are they in alphabetical order? Oh, no, they're in a conference order. Okay. Georgia Southern. Five and a half. All right. So let's see. Can we get six wins? All right. Georgia Southern. Uh, all right. So we'll say Boise State's a loss. They beat Nevada and beat South Carolina State. They're two and one. Old Miss is a loss, so they're two and two. We'll count the Georgia State game as a loss for now. That's two and three. They beat Marshall, beat James Madison. That's four and three. I'll say they split with ODU in South Alabama. That is uh, five and four. You beat Troy at home. That's six and four. Lose to Coastal on the road. That's six and five. Beat App State seven and five. And then you maybe win a couple of more games. Maybe you beat Georgia State. Maybe you sweep ODU in South Alabama. All right. And, you know, I kind of like that. Like that over. And I kind of like the 10 and a half against Boise. All right. That's that week one is the toughest thing to bet. <laughs> the later on in the season, when we go conference play, those are tough to bet. And that week one, we don't know what we're going to get at all. And obviously, Boise's done this before. They've come down and played the Cajuns in humidity. That was a long time ago with... Maybe been Brian Harson uh, coming down there and coaching him. And obviously he coached Arkansas State, so he knows what the humidity is all about. Uh, and it's not that, you know, humid free up there. It, they, it can be warm up in Idaho in the summer, uh, but it obviously is not what it is going to be in Statesboro. So it'll be interesting to see what that is. Uh, I, think, I think Georgia Southern is going to um, exceed expectations for this year. I'm not sure they're going to quite contend for the Sun Belt East. I do like the over there. I think you can easily see six or seven or maybe more wins. And then if it's more than that, then they are contending in the East. Uh, so we shall see. All right. Thanks for, uh, thanks very much for tuning in. Thanks for staying tuned <laughs> during the move inside. Uh, appreciate it. Again, almost 1,300 subscribers. We're getting really close. We're going to be very close to that goal. Please help me out. It is a, uh, it is a huge help. All right. Um, thanks so much. And I think we'll probably see you again tomorrow.